So in our previous video, we've been thinking about the process of ultrafiltration, where some of the substances are uh, filtered out of the blood and it enters the Bowman's capsule becoming filtrate. Uh, some of the substances like urea, which is toxic, uh, we want to get rid of. Uh, it will stay in the filtrate and finally be excreted as urine here. But some of the other things like glucose, for example, we do want them back because it's useful for our body. So we want to reabsorb them in this case. So here we'll be looking at the details of it, thinking about where things get reabsorbed and by what process they do so. So first of all, after the substances enter the Bowman's capsule, it travels through the proximal convoluted tubule. The first thing that we can consider is that glucose is being reabsorbed completely. And all of these glucose are reabsorbed by the process of active transport. And other substances such as uh, amino acids and vitamins and hormones are also reabsorbed in this case and they do the same thing uh, by active transport. If we rely on diffusion, it might stop when we reach a equilibrium point, uh, which we don't want that happening because we want everything back. So we rely on active transport to do so. Apart from glucose, uh, some of the uh, sodium ions can also be reabsorbed and they do so by active transport as well. And because of the movement of the sodium ions, uh, this changes the water potential in the filtrate. So therefore, following after sodium, water also leaves by the process of osmosis. In the same concept, because of the movement of the water, the filtrate becomes more concentrated and therefore chloride ions can also leave now by diffusion. As you can see, most of the uh, reabsorption happens in the proximal convoluted tubule. In this bit, actually 50% of the urea is also reabsorbed, uh, but that's not quite in the spec. However, it's something that you need to be aware of. After the selective reabsorption happening in the proximal convoluted tubule, uh, the filtrate will continue to move into uh, the loop of Henle. Now in the loop of Henle, the first thing that gets reabsorbed is water. And the same concept, whenever there is water movement, it's always going to be by the process of osmosis. Now here we need to consider the uh, water potential and the concentration of ions here. As uh, we move down the loop of Henle, or we call the descending limb of the loop of Henle, because water is moving out here, so therefore the ion concentration inside the filtrate will increase. So things like uh, the concentration of sodium ions and the concentration of chloride ions will increase. When it reaches this uh, bottom bit, we say the filtrate has reached a hypertonic point, which means it has a really, really high concentration of salt inside. Since that there is a high salt concentration inside the filtrate compared to outside, the salt can easily move out by diffusion without using any sort of energy. Uh, as we go up the ascending limb, the concentration of salt inside the filtrate decreases. Eventually, when we get to this point, we say that it is isotonic. What we mean by that is that the concentration of salt inside and out of the filtrate is pretty much the same. And at that point, if we still want to get these things back, we need to do so by active transport. This is the guarantee that we get as many salts back as possible. So eventually we'll get to the distal convoluted tubule as you can see here that I've already drawn out. So at this case, the body will only reabsorb these things if the body needs it. So if the body needs more salt, then it will reabsorb these two um, ions by active transport and diffusion. Water as well, if the body is dehydrated, we will reabsorb more of them by the action of antidiuretic hormone. As I said, it only reabsorbs it if it needs it. And the whole point is to balance uh, some of the things in the body. So specifically, it balances the water and salt needs, depending if the body needs it, and also uh, the pH of the blood. And as you would know, linking to some of the other chapters, uh, pH is really important because if it's too high or too low, it will denature the enzymes in the blood or any other proteins which will not be good. Then finally, we reach the collecting duct in here. As we move down the collecting duct, uh, in this bit, this is where osmoregulation really, really uh, occurs. We'll talk more about osmoregulation in another video, but here I'll just very quickly illustrate it. So water can again be reabsorbed and it's by the process of osmosis, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, but EDH, which is antidiuretic hormone, plays a major role here. It really only affects the collecting duct and sometimes on the proximal convoluted tubule. So what ADH does is it tells the tubule wall to actually deposit more uh, protein channels that transport water is called aquaporins. If we've got more ADH, we get more water reabsorption. Another thing that is worth noting is, as we go down the collecting duct here, uh, sometimes the cells that the cells around can actually change the concentration of salts in the tissue fluid, which is directly uh, surrounding the tubules before going into the blood. Generates a steep water concentration gradient. 
If there's more ions, then it's more concentrated, meaning comparatively speaking, less water. That means more water will leave the filtrate to enter the tissue fluid and then finally back into the blood. And it's the same for everything else. They all go into the tissue fluid directly around it and then go into the, capi um, the capillary, which is blood that surrounds it, and directly linked from the efferent arterial that it goes from here. And then finally, anything that is left then, uh, becomes the urine. And at this point, what you will get remaining will be uh, urea, any excess water that the body doesn't need, excess salt. These will then go into the blood to be excreted. So very quickly, uh, a recap. Ultrafiltration happens in the glomerulus and the filtrate travels uh, through the proximal convoluted tubule. Here, mo all of the glucose, amino acids, hormones and vitamins are reabsorbed completely by active transport. Some of the sodium ions are also reabsorbed by active transport. The water falls by osmosis because of the change in concentration. And chloride ions also move out by diffusion because of the uh, concentration difference between the filtrate and the tissue fluid around it. Then the filtrate will travel down the loop of Henle here. Uh, water is reabsorbed by osmosis, which leads to an increase in salt concentration inside the filtrate. When it reaches this point, it reaches the hypertonic point, which, where there is a very high salt concentration in the filtrate. So therefore, salt can easily move out by diffusion. And because it does this, as we go up, more and more salt is being removed by diffusion, so the concentration of salt in the filtrate decreases. Then it reaches an isotonic point where there is about the same concentration in and out of the filtrate. So therefore, if the body wants to still get more salt back, it will do active transport. Then it goes into the uh, distal convoluted tubule where it will reabsorb more of the salt and water if the body needs to balance the water and salt uh, concentrations and the pH of the blood. Then it goes into the collecting duct where it does the final osmoregulation bit. If more water needs to be reabsorbed depending on the situation of the body, then more or less ADH will be released uh, to tell more aquaporins to be deposited onto the wall for water reabsorption. Also, the concentration of the tissue fluid uh, in terms of the sodium concentration can also generate a steep water concentration gradient so that water can move out naturally as well. Finally, we get urine, which consists of urea and any excess water and salts to be excreted uh, in the final bit.